Okay, so if I was going to start a dropshipping business with less than $1,000, this is exactly how I would do it. The business we're going to be taking a look at today is called Kate's Plushies. This is a business I found for sale on flipper.com and it currently has the highest bid of $2,500. So it is a business that we can learn a lot from and it's obviously a business that somebody out there sees value in owning. Before we go any further though, I want to get the elephant in the room out the way, which is this. December 23, 40 grand profit in a month with 50K in sales, 16K in rev and gen with a 12K profit. And as you can see, it's just died a slow in death since then. The reason why I wanna address this, I think it's important, um, number one, for transparency. Um, and also number two, is it also highlights the main issue when it comes to an organic strategy. The next thing I want to show you is this. The profit margin is 75%. That's unheard of in the dropshipping space, especially if you're using paid marketing. These guys are not. This is an organic store. What this means is that they are producing content and they are posting that content across social media platforms and they're using the reach that it gets to drive traffic to their store to drive sales. This is why sales have been so inconsistent with or the organic method. Yes, you can make a lot of money if it goes well and you get a post that goes viral. So in this video, I'll be showing you everything, of course, if you're familiar with these formats. I'll show you the store, I'll show you the content, I'll show you the entire setup so you've got all of the information you need to go away and replicate this process with a different product. So yes, there are advantages to the organic strategy and the fact that your profit margins are a lot higher and you can make significantly more money if you find that initial post or series of posts that goes viral, but being able to keep it up and keep sales consistent is really, really difficult to do. And I'll tell you what I would do if I were these guys later on in the video in order to capitalize on what they've already built. And this is probably where this bidder that's willing to pay two and a half thousand dollars is probably looking at the same thing that I'm looking at, or at least sees the value there, which I'll go over later on in the video. So their primary focus when it comes to the platforms they're posting on, they have 37,000 followers across Instagram and TikTok. They are the two platforms in which they are using to generate and drive the traffic to their site. I also want to show you the fulfillment supply chain because this is important. This is not a unique original product. This is a typical dropshipping product that anybody can buy and the clues are here. So our fulfillment process is straightforward and efficient. Our plushies are dropshipped where we work with a private supplier. Should the new owner prefer to use their own supplier, they have the flexibility to do so. Basically what this confirms is that they are not manufacturing this product. They're not the designers, they're not the owners. This is a product anybody else can go out and sell. Marketing channels, leveraging organic social media content on TikTok, Instagram, and also YouTube to maintain a strong online presence. This business can also benefit benefit from exploring paid advertising. This is why this business has a bid on. These guys have, I'm not sure if they actually say how many orders they have. Um, so the average order value is $40. They've done $90,000 in sales. Divide that by is that about 2,000 orders? Okay, so basically they have about 2,200 orders. They have the email list, which there is value there for obvious reasons. Um, but where I see the most value coming from is being able to use that order list for paid marketing channels. You can upload your customer list into the Facebook ads platform. You can retarget that initial list with other products. But where I see the value coming from is using that to generate lookalike audiences so you can target people who are also similar to those 2,000 people who have purchased your product. They can use the success they've already had to their advantage to hit the ground running with paid marketing channels. The other place in which they can improve if they have achieved this level of success with such an amateurish looking store. So let's go onto their product page. Well, first things first is on their homepage, they're referencing, they're referencing a March sale. We're currently in July. And they're also referencing a January sale. We're also in July. This is a business that has been lacking some TLC for quite a long time. When we come onto the main product page, it's not too bad. It's all kind of in keeping and on theme. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll be taking a look, of course, at the ad creators and the kind of content they're posting. I think that's where the value comes in this 
um, business. For somebody watching this video who is on a tighter budget, this is definitely the strategy you want to adopt and follow. Hopefully you can stumble across on something that works for you in a similar regard, in a similar level of success. But where these guys may have, instead of chosen to reinvest that capital back into the business, they may have just taken it out and continued down the organic route and then maybe got a bit fed up with it thinking it's more hassle than it's worth and decided to try and offload and sell it. It looks like they had some really good numbers in December and January and even February. However, over the course of the last sort of four or five months, they haven't really found anything that's gained that traction to generate the sales. Maybe they've fallen out of love with the business. Back to the product page though. Product page is, is adequate, it's everything it needs to be. They do a really good job of kind of trying to squeeze as much money as possible out of the customer by having this bundle and save offer. One thing I would have done was to make this add to cart button the blue that they've got the text and then when you hover over it have it go yellow or vice versa just so it stands out a bit more on the page they obviously have an issue here with an image loading so they need to check that there's no information on here either about when they're going to receive the product but otherwise everything that needs to be there is there the only true way to kind of judge how successful a design of a website is is to look at the conversion rate of the Shopify store. And until you know that number, it's difficult to say whether any changes need to be made because for all I know, this store is converting at a 5% conversion rate, in which case you might as well keep it as it is. Okay, so let's jump into their Instagram account then. Um, we'll hover over some of these so you can see the sorts of numbers. Um, and they're not to be sniffed at, to be honest. So 388 likes is decent, but look at this, nearly 10,000, 1,000, 1,000, 500, 500, 12,000. So every now and again, they do get that one piece of content that does really, really well and probably generates them a few hundred dollars in sales. But look how much content they are posting. It's video after video after video after video after video. It's a lot of work to put into a business to, well, as we've seen in the sales, for most of the time to get nothing back in return. So this is, in my opinion, strictly for the person who is on, who is, has loads of time on their hands, but not much capital. If you have not a lot of time, but a lot of capital, then paid marketing is definitely your option because you can continue to drive traffic to your website without the need to do anything. Once you've set up your campaigns, you can kind of set and forget about them. Not forget entirely, they do need check-in probably every um, every evening, I do mine at least for kind of like 10 or 20 minutes, which in comparison to these guys who probably spend hours each day, or somebody who makes this successfully consistently would definitely be spending hours each day producing content. I'm gonna describe, let's take a look at some of the most successful ones. I bought one of these, it never arrived. I know that it's not edible, but I want one. Wait, there's a big one, wouldn't, wouldn't buy the snack that smiles back. So they're kind of using common past viral themes like where is the credit card? And then me, it shows that somebody's spending all their money on these things. But the music you won't be able to hear in the background is like some theme tune. And I did a bit of Google research and it looks like that these snacks here, there's actually like a goldfish cheddar snack in the US. So basically what they're doing is they're taking an audience that is already passionate um, about a certain product and they're selling a product specifically for those people so that when people hear that theme tune and they see the cracker, it instantly resonates with them. And then when they see that there's a pillow, a plush pillow that they can buy, that's what's getting them over the line. So the way you could take this and apply it to some other product, well, first and foremost, you need to approach with caution. I don't know how legal or legit this is. The fact they've been doing it for a while, I don't know the theme tune either. So they might be using a variation of the theme tune, which they are allowed to use, I'm not 100% sure, but um, the key takeaway is just approach with caution. But you could take any popular snack or chocolate bar that has a theme tune or ring tune and create something that's similar-ish, create a product around it. So let me think, I don't know. So here in the UK, we have penguin bars, right? And there is a common theme tune um, when it comes to um, penguin bars. So you could create a penguin plush toy. There's probably one on AliExpress already. You could get a penguin theme tune and then just replicate exactly what you've seen here. Look at the eyes on these pieces of content though. 133,000, 80,000, 2,000, 3,000. I mean, these are some big, big numbers that are not to be sniffed at. And when done correctly and driving people to the correct place, well, we can see the results. They're able to make 90,000 in sales um, with, I think it was 60 grand in profit, all from posting organically. Even if you only did that for one or two months a year, you're still making two or three times what the average person does working 40 hours a week. They definitely, definitely, definitely are missing a couple of um, 
hacks or tips or strategies, one thing you can do is you can get a message bot, bot called ManyChat. Um, so I think they, in one of the videos, they ask people to comment. So on ManyChat, um, especially since AI is brilliant, is you can set up, so when people comment certain things, it auto um, DMs them a private message from your page. So what you could do is every time somebody posts something like, um, now nah, we need a hundred. Every time somebody posts anything, it could be any comment, but I would probably stick to when anybody says something like, um, can they come in other colors or, or somebody saying, I want one, send an auto DM with a link to the actual product. Because when somebody comes across this post, look, they would then have to go to the profile and find a link that way. Instead, send them an auto message, which prompts them with a call to action with a discount code as well to help get them onto your website and put them over the line. I think there's definitely a few things these guys are missing, which they could have helped kind of optimize the process to maybe even squeeze a bit more out of their audience. But either way, they've done a great job. And so with that being said, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. Before we go, a very quick message is that if you enjoyed this one and you would like some help putting this strategy into practice, some hand holding if you'd like through the kind of building and launching of a business through that entire process. I want to invite you onto a Google Meet with myself. Um, 20 or 30 minutes, casual, friendly chat to get to know each other, um, get to know your experiences with dropshipping, get to know what your goals are over the next few months. And if you have some realistic goals that I believe I can help you achieve, we can have a chat about mentorship and get something put together, a plan, a game plan, um, I call it a growth strategy put together to help you achieve that. If that sounds good to you, what you need to do is head to the video description below this video, click the mentorship link. It'll take you through to a series of questions that are dead easy to fill out. Get those filled out. Make sure you give me as much detailed information as possible so I can get to know where you are now, where you want to be with my help. And if you have a realistic and achievable goal that I can help you get to, it'll take you through to my calendar where you'll be able to book a time and date for us to jump on a call and meet. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next